let's take a closer look at the initialize stage and the work that the scene class does uh, for window independent setup. So some of the work's done by the base class and we looked at that in the previous playlist. Uh, in this video we'll focus on the derived scene class which um, uses the, the device to create its input layout and its shaders and then it creates uh, some geometry. Let's go over to Visual Studio. So this is the scene class we'll be looking at and it derives from the base class where some of the some of the setup and other work is done. We have uh, a member for the input layout that the device will create for us and the shaders. And we have this do window independent setup function where where the work is going on that we're going to look at. So let's let's uh, drill into that. So the first thing we do is call the the super class or the base classes implementation of this same function and that does uh, things like creating the the blend state like we saw before and d2d so it's it's the kind of thing that you probably won't want to override in your in your derived class so we just do that once um, in one place and that place is the base class we grab pointer to the device because we're going to be using that we call read data async twice to load these shaders I'll talk about shaders in a later video. Um, let's just see what this read data async function does. So it's a helper function. It's got Win32 and Windows Store code in it. And it takes a file name and returns the bytes from that file name in a vector. Now the interesting thing though is it, it's, uh, it's asynchronous. It, it actually returns a a PPL task, a parallel patterns library task. So going back to where we call that, we we take that task that's returned and we put it in an auto. We do the same for the pixel shader. And then when the vertex shader task, it, um, or rather with the vertex shader task, we add on a continuation so that so that when that shader is finished being loaded, we can do things that depend on it. Uh, the first thing we do is we ask the device to create as an input layout and the input layout it returns in that smart pointer member that we looked at a second ago. Um, we have to describe we have to describe the vertex uh, the vertices and we do that with this accessor method on this vertex type. The, this accessor method returns a field which we can look at now it's just this field. So what we're saying is um, the structure of each vertex um, is a tuple. So each vertex is a position, a normal and a color. Um, and then we create the vertex shader also using the device and that, that returns as a smart pointer that we can use later. And then this whole continuation is itself uh, ret it returns a task so we we grab hold of that task because we're going to wait on it later. And then for the pixel shader, do a similar thing. Um, we just create the pixel shader on the vertex. Uh, this, this, the thing we did differently for the vertex shader was that we created the input layout too. So once we've set all that in motion, all those asynchronous uh, tasks in motion, we come and we create our vertex buffer and our index buffer essentially that's what this code is doing. Let's just talk about that though what, an, what a vertex and an index are before we before we look at the code any more closely. So I've, I've kind of represented a vertex buffer at the top of the screen. It's got three vertices in it and each vertex is a tuple. Um, I'm missing out the normal in this case. Uh, it's really got a position, a normal and a colour whereas I'm only showing a, a position and a colour here. The normal, we're not using normals anyway because we're not lighting this triangle, it's just coloured, it's not lit. So those normals will be set to the default value, so you know, let's just ignore them for now. So you can see there's three vertexes, three vertices, uh, each one's got a normal, uh, sorry, each one's got a position, XYZ position, and a, a colour in it. And then we want to tell the input assembler um, what to do with those vertices. We're saying read off the first, second, and third um, vertex out of that buffer indexes 0, 1 and 2 because it's obviously 0 based indices and we're drawing them in order bottom left, top left, 
bottom right and the the winding order the order in which you specify the indices determines where the front face is so by default the front face is upwards um, if you're looking down on a clockwise face and we've defined we've sent the indices down to the input assembler and clockwise here so um, what I, what I do in my code is I, I create uh, I create a mesh batch and I, I tell it what the what the um, primitive layout is in this case it's a triangle list of the vertex type that we defined this thing here and then I get a from that mesh batch I, I get an, I get a mesh and we add these these um, positions and colors these vertices just got a function called add position and color that takes a position and a color and uh, brings back an in the index of that um, vertex in the vertex buffer. So th this is actually the index of that thing. So I'm going to add just three of those, just like we saw in the diagram, add three of those and then add the indices in order. Let's see what that looks like when we run it. So very just very simple triangle, it kind of looks more 3D if you move around it. So then, the other thing I want to show is if I if I want to make a square instead of a triangle, we can reuse two of those vertices. So I really only need a, a third vertice vertex. I'm putting this at the top right, at the right top. But we need three more indices. So I only have to add one more vertex, but I need to add three more indices with a triangle list because I have to define the entire second triangle. So this is what that looks like once it builds and runs. Should just be a square this time. So it's two triangles next to one another. And then if we don't want to, if we do something, want to do something a little bit more efficient than um, adding three more indices, we can actually just add one more index if we change the primitive to a triangle strip. That way, um, again, I added that same fourth vertex, but I've only needed to add one more index because of the way triangle strips work. So now we get the same, that same square, but uh, we don't have to send as many indices down. And of course, those indices add up here. We only saved two. Uh, we only, we only saved ourselves um, sending two indices down. But of course, those those will add up with very very large meshes. And then uh, right at the end of the function, we just wait for those um, the other tasks that we created, those two continuations. Once once the continuations have finished, we add yet another continuation, which simply sets um, a member, which a which actually is defined on the base class, but it's a member that just tells us that uh, our asynchronous work is complete. And then that's the that's the queue for the run stage to begin.